find out really quickly how you can mount a Samba file share into a Linux virtual machine in Azure. And then if the machine goes away, it doesn't matter because all of your work is already saved in the Samba file share. Let's see how you can do that in Azure. All right, so here we are in the Azure portal and I'm going to uh, show you really quickly that I have some virtual machines here. Uh, just one, it's a uh, Samba test machine. I've named it Samba test, it's running Linux. And um, you might have something like this already running in your infrastructure. So I have Samba test running here and I've enabled SSH already. So if I want to connect, uh, I can select here SSH and it will give me all of the uh, steps necessary. Now, when I created this machine, I uh, used my key already, so I'm not going to have any problems running, uh, running and selecting that um, uh, disconnection string. So if I do that really quickly and then I um, go to my terminal over here and paste that uh, connection string and use the SSH command. So that's the user and IP. So I'm going to use SSH and it should allow me to get into this Azure machine. That's perfect. I, I've logged in. I verified that I can access this machine. So now let me go back to the browser uh, because what I want to show you today is actually how to create a Samba share. So the first thing you need to do is go to a storage accounts and then hit uh, create. You need one. Like if you have one already, then that's fine. You can use that, but like I'm going to create one from scratch. There we go. Um, so that's my subscription and I'm going to give this uh, a, uh, a, a name, storage account name. We can say, for example, uh, Sam, Samba test, there you go. Uh, Samba test uh, 100. How about that? So we're going to, it has to be unique. So if I use something not very generic like Samba, it will, it will probably uh, give me, it will probably com complain. So we can say Samba test 100. Um, then performance standard is fine. Uh, make read access to data available in the event. Yeah, sure. If all of these uh, things that are there by default uh, are fine. Uh, I'm going to click review and create. Then uh, validation passed. I'm going to click create, initializing, deployment, deployment in progress and uh, everything everything there is uh, moving already and and it will take just a couple of uh, minutes to complete. So once this is uh, complete, what you'll want to do is create a file share. So uh, there we go, that's that's the resource that is being created and it will take a couple of uh, a couple of minutes. So let's check back when when this is done. All right, so this is done and we want to go to the resource. I'm going to click there and I am going to scroll uh, all the way down to, to see the properties. So in the properties, you have blob service and security and networking. And I'm going to choose file service in the file service. What you want is you want to click there and then you want to add a file share. So this uh, button over here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to say um, Samba file share. The name is important because you will be using that to connect later. So I'm going to uh, hit create. This is very simple, really, and you can definitely automate these uh, afterwards, but I'm going to use the, the portal so you can see how, how this is created. So I'm going to create that successfully created storage file share. This happens like uh, almost automatically. I'm going to click there. And now I'm going to click uh, on connect because I want to use this share. So when you hit the uh, connect, you have the Windows, Linux and Mac OS options. Uh, I have a Linux VM, so I'm going to click here. And what you need to do is you need to copy this whole script. It's a snippet that has everything you uh, you need in order in order to mount that uh, on your machine. So we, we're going to copy this. There's a copy to clipboard button here. Otherwise you can select the whole thing. You can see here that there's a Samba file share path already in there. So that's why that naming of the, uh, of the, of the file share, in this case, Samba file share, it's important. So I'm going to go 
to my uh, to my terminal and I am going to um, create a file here and let's call it uh, mount.sh and I am going to paste the contents of what the portal gave me. So I'm going to right quit that and then I am going to execute uh, these with bash. So I'm going to say uh, sudo bash mount.sh. I've executed it, but like nothing really seems to be happening. Well, the, the thing here is that uh, it executed silently. But if we look at the contents of mount.sh, it is going to be using slash mnt uh, slash uh, samba file share. So if we go there, slash mnt, uh, you can see that there's a Samba file share there. So if we go and say Samba file share and we want to go into that directory and we can list the contents, well, you have uh, you don't have uh, anything here. So I can say I'm going to create a directory called demo uh, and I'm going to touch a file, file one and file two. So I have some files there. And that is effectively how you uh, add a, a Samba share to um, to Azure and then you can mount later. Um, the good thing about this is that you can produce work, save your work there. The VM can go away. You can create a new VM, mount the Samba file share back from scratch, and you're good to go. So if we go back to um, to here, uh, we can uh, uh, close this uh, connect, and uh, we can um, we can refresh. And look at that, we're gonna have our demo is going to show up there and inside our demo are file one and file two, which are files that I just created on the terminal, in the terminal within that uh, virtual machine. So this should give you like a good idea on how to create this. Again, this is useful because it allows you to have ephemeral VMs. So you can launch a VM, uh, do some work with the Samba file share mounted, save your work to the Samba file share, and then effectively don't care about the VM if it goes away.